Welcome to Electron Line. Now, one of the major reasons why we use Markov chains and one of the major outcomes we're looking for is to find the stable distribution matrix. So we're actually after what will the end state be, starting with some initial state and starting with some probability matrix that describes what's happening in the market or what's happening in nature, what's happening with the thing that we're looking at, we should end up being able to come up with the final state of the system. So let's say that we have a two-state system. We have A and B, and we have a probability matrix that looks like this, which means if we're A, we remain A 80% of the time, and we go to B 20% of the time. If we're B, we remain B 90% of the time, and go back to A 10% of the time. If this continues on, and let's say we have some sort of initial matrix, what will the end state be in that case? What will the, what we call the stable distribution matrix be? Well, we saw in a previous video that one of the ways to calculate that is to go ahead and multiply a power of the probability matrix with the initial state to see what the end state will be. And of course, the greater the power of the probability matrix, the closer we get to the end state. Now what happens is, let's say we try to find the P, the probability matrix, to the end power, to some very large number n. Well, eventually, that's also going to become stable. The probability matrix raised to the n power will become a stable quantity. And let's go ahead and do that with this particular case and see what ends up here. So we take that initial probability matrix and we now find p squared. And we notice that this is the result for p squared. We take p squared multiplied times p to get p cubed. We get this. We take p cubed multiplied times p to get p to the, oh, and I actually have the other way around, it's p times p cubed to get this p to the fourth, and p to, times p to the fourth to get p to the fifth, and p times p to the fifth to get p to the sixth, and so forth. And if we just keep doing that, eventually we get at some value for n, p to the n power, whatever n requires to be, we get the stable probability matrix. So with other words, we get something that will no longer change when we keep multiplying it by itself. So we can get this matrix multiplied times p, we get the very same matrix. Basically, it's one third, one third in the, in the first row, and two thirds and two thirds in the second row. You will get this after you do this about 12 times. And of course, I didn't want to take up, up all that board space, but if you do this yourself about 12 times, you will get to this stable matrix. Now what happens when we take this stable matrix and multiply times the initial condition? Irregardless what the initial distribution is. So for example, let's start with this initial state, or this initial state, or this initial state, multiply that times this stable probability matrix to the n power. And let's see what happens in each case. So here we're going to multiply, let's say, p to the 12th power, which is basically equal to that, times the initial state, when the initial state is 1 for a and 0 for b. Okay, let's try that. So we get one third times one times one third times zero. So this gives us one third and two thirds times one times two thirds times zero gives us two thirds. So that means that this will now be the stable distribution matrix, the end state right here, if we do this a number of times through the process. Now what happens if we start with an initial state like this instead of like that? Do we get the same result? Let's find out. So this would be one third times 0.5 plus one third times 0.5, which indeed gives us one third. And 2 thirds times 0.5 plus 2 thirds times 0.5 gives us 2 thirds. So here we see that it didn't matter if we started in this state or in this state. If we multiply that times the stable probability matrix, when we take p to the nth power, n being a very large number, we end up with the same n state. Well, let's try one more time. Let's try this state and see what we get here. So here we get 0 plus 1 third. And here we get 0 plus 2 thirds. And again, it doesn't make any difference how vastly different the initial state is if we multiply that times the stable probability matrix, the probability matrix that we get when we multiply the probability matrix times itself n number of times, n being a very large number, we end up with the very same end state. Wow. So that's very interesting to know. If we're indeed interested in finding the end state, how do we do that? Well, one way to do that is to get a very high power of the probability matrix and multiply that then times the initial state and you'll get the final stable end state. Now the question is, how do we know that we reach the final probability matrix in its end to the end power so that it becomes stable? Well, obviously you can do this over and over and over again until the numbers stop changing. Then you know you got a stable probability matrix to the end power. Or 
There's some other methods, and we'll show you how to do those other methods as well. But the basic idea is get the stable probability matrix by taking the initial probability matrix and multiply it times self n number times, so until the numbers become stable, then multiply it times whatever the initial condition is, it doesn't even matter, and you'll get some stable final condition. That's where you'll end up using that probability matrix. And that's how we do that. Hopefully that gives you another understanding, another aspect of how Markov chains work. They work in an amazing way and you always get those results based upon going to that procedure. So stay tuned and I'll show you how now to calculate this without having to go through all those various methodologies to get there. So see you on the next videos.